set is a regular normal Turing machine program, which takes in inputs and will recognize if that input is part of its set. It will say yes if the answer is yes, but might not say no. So this is a regular Turing machine ex recognizer, and this is an enumerator. And Chris was getting to this. If you have one, you can have the other. And let's talk about why that's true. So which would you like to do? There's two directions. Either somebody gives us a regular recognizer, and we have to come up with the enumerator, or somebody gives us the enumerator, and we have to describe the recognizer. One of them is easier than the other, I think. I don't know which is easier, but you can decide. One of them is what Chris was talking about. Chris, can you figure out which one? Someone gives you a recognizer. Somebody gives you a recognizer, a machine that takes an input and says yes if the answer is yes. And you have to come up with a Turing machine that does the enumerating. Everyone understand that problem? Again, you have a Turing machine that will recognize a string if it's in your set. You have to come up with another Turing machine that will eventually print out all the strings that that first Turing machine recognizes one at a time on the tape. Okay? Is that easy or hard to do? Let's see how that, what that sounds like. That's a good start. Let's start from there. Why don't we start with every single string? We'll start with the empty string. And we'll run it through our recognizer. And if it says yes, we'll print it out on the enumerator. The enumerator will just simulate the acceptor. And if it says yes on the empty string, we'll print it out. And if it says no, we won't print it out. It could run forever, right. Right, so we could do that dovetailing trick again. What the enumerator has to do is simulate the acceptor, but it's got to dovetail the acceptor. It's got to go ahead and run the acceptor on the first string for one step, and then on the first string for one more step, and on the second string for one step. And then on the first two strings for one more step, and on the third string for one step. And any time any of those strings stop and say, I accept you, the enumerator stops and spits it out on the tape. Does everybody get that? So the issue is that it could loop forever? It could loop forever. The recognizer does not necessarily stop. So in order to prevent that looping, we dovetail it through all the inputs at the same time. And whenever any input of the acceptor gets accepted, we print it out on the tape. So I'm going to write the proof is by dovetailing and then printing. Printing. when it gets accepted. What order are these strings going to get printed out? Any special order? Order of, completion. order of completion. Do we have any idea which string is going to get accepted first? It has to do with how many steps it takes to accept it. It's possible that the 400,000th string gets accepted in two steps, and that the first string gets accepted in two trillion steps. There is no expected order to the enumeration here. That's very important. They could come up in any order, any size. You could have very long strings getting printed out first and very short strings getting printed out later. EJ, you get that? Chris? This was the harder side, Chris Walker. Let's do the easier side. Somebody gives you an enumerator. It spits out strings one at a time with a pound sign in between each one. How do you come up with an accepting, a recognizing machine? You give the recognizing machine a string. It's got to decide whether it accepts that string. Give a yes when the answer is yes. Run down the tape comparing. Yeah, start the enumerator. Let it go. Every time it spits out a string, compare it to the string you were given as input. If they match, you say yes. And if they don't match, let the enumerator go. The enumerator is eventually going to enumerate all these strings, all the strings in the language. If your string that you're looking at is really in the language, sooner or later it's going to show up on that tape. And you'll match it. And you'll say yes. If it never gets shown up there, you'll run forever. But all we want is a recognizable Turing machine, not a decidable Turing machine. So this is just simulate 
the enumerator and compare its strings to the input. So this is, a, this is an easier direction. This is more natural. This is harder. This, this is where you really need dovetailing. This is a classic example where, where that dovetailing idea is used. So this is a theorem relating enumerators to recursively enumerable sets. They're the same. And I want you to guess a theorem. Recursive sets relate to enumerators in what kind of a way? This is not an obvious theorem to guess at all, but somebody might guess it. If an enumerator exists, there's a recursively enumerable recognizing Turing machine. If there's a recursive Turing machine, there's a special kind of enumerator that exists, better than just your typical enumerator. I'll give you a hint. Remember what I asked you before about this enumerator? When it does the simulation, how it spits out its strings? What about those strings? They don't have to be in any particular order of size. If the set is recursive, I can guarantee there's an enumerator that will generate the strings out in order of size, from smallest to largest. An enumerator that's lexicographic. All that means is it enumerates the strings in order. Let's convince ourselves why this is true. This is not so complicated to work our way through, and it'll finish up this idea, and then I can go on to my Turing machine example and finish up today. Let's think about this. Say I have a recursive set. That means I got a Turing machine program that answers yes or no. Tell me how to enumerate those strings in size order. What should I do? I can use my recursive machine and start going through strings from smallest to largest. I run it on the empty string, and I sit there and tap my foot until the machine tells me yes or no. I don't have to worry here. I got a yes or no on every single string. And if it says yes, I print it out on the enumeration tape. And if it says no, I go on to the next string. I don't have that problem. I don't have the dovetailing problem. Because of that, I don't have any kind of randomness as far as the size of the string that gets printed out first. I can guarantee that if the empty string is in this language, I will print that out first. And if it's not, then 0 will come next, then 1 will come next, and 0, 1, and then 1, 0, 0, then 0, 1, etc. I can just do them in order because the recursive set gives me a yes or no answer for each one that I generate. What about the other way? What about if somebody gives you an enumerator? Then you can just wait until where the string ought to show up shows up. Then. Good. The enumerator is supposed to put the strings out in size order. So let's say the recursive, alleged recursive set is supposed to be deciding this. So I'm looking at this 1011. I'm hoping to decide yes or no on it. And I got an enumerator that generates all these strings in lexicographic order. I start it out. And I watch. If this ever shows up, I say yes. And if I ever get past it, if that ever happens, I say, whoa. The answer is no, because it didn't show up where it was supposed to. So this is a very nice, these are the kind of theorems that, that people who do this stuff for a living like. It just clarifies things that seem like they're different at first and really aren't. Enumerating things that can do things in order is the same as recursive sets. Enumerating things that are not necessarily enumerating things in size order are the same as recursively enumerable sets. If something's not recursively enumerable, then there's no enumerator for it. Yeah, Chris. Uh, a recursive set that you know, the string 1100 is the last string you accept to the infinity of strings. Can you? A recursive set whose? A recursive, uh, a decidable set. Yeah. 1100 is the last, is the largest string that it accepts set. OK. Um, and you have an enumerator. You, and 1100 doesn't show up on the tape, you'll never know whether it should be in the set or not. Because your enumerator is running forever and not printing anything out. And you haven't gotten the 1100. You're saying if the enumerator happens to be finite? If it happens to be a finite set? If the, if the set is finite, yeah. 